So, um, who doesn't want to be a manager? I mean, raise your hand if you don't want to be a manager. That's quite a lot of people. So, thank God we have Liz Fong Johns, who's uh, an SLM at Google, Site Reliability Manager at Google, and she's going to talk to us about how you can impact your team and add to the management of your team without actually being a manager, which is so awesome. So, thank you. All right, I hope this still works after being put this up for 20 minutes. Let's find out. Ah, I see. Okay, that's easy enough to fix. Give me a second. And fix that. Have to love technical difficulties. And now I just do this, I think. Great. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Liz Hong Jones, and I manage the Big Table Site Reliability Engineering team in New York for Google. So I've been doing SRE since about 2005, although it wasn't called SRE at the time. And I've been working at Google as a site reliability engineering uh, since 2008. So I actually came to managing in an interesting way. I've been managing a organization that consists of volunteers in an online game uh, that ranged in size from about 200 people when I started to about 15,000 people at its peak. Um, and once you've been managing as your hobby for a couple of years, you realize that maybe that's something you might want to do as your day job. So I switched to management at Google a year ago. And I've really loved it, but I know that it's not really for everyone. And I also know that people tend to say, oh, that's manager stuff, or oh, that's individual contributor stuff. And it's kind of actually really a blend. So that's what I want to talk about in this talk. <clears throat> it's basically that there are so many interesting ways that you can help your team out without ever actually taking on the formal management role. In particular, the thing that I want to emphasize um, is that you can learn how to recognize common situations that your team may face and common solutions to them, and how to either tell your management, this is a problem and here is why, in language that they'll understand, or just solve the problem yourself without ever having to get a manager's attention. And if you learn nothing else from this talk, I hope that you'll learn how to communicate more effectively with your manager, and also how to spot if your manager is not doing the best possible job and help them do the best possible job with you. So, I want to emphasize, management is just how do you influence a team or a group of individuals to act in a way that you would like. It's not a job title, it's a skill. Anyone can do it. You can learn to do it. And it doesn't make you a manager, capital M, to do management work. So, what do managers actually do, capital M managers, uh, for the most part? Uh, the first thing that we do is we keep the trains running on time. We make sure that our teams are delivering projects, that our teams are happy, that the people are not leaving in mass, um, that our people are developing. And we coordinate. We're the people that, sit, that uh, basically say, here's the direction we'd like to go, how do we get there, and then motivate people to do it. And then we communicate upwards and downwards and say, you know, I'm really worried about this project because I see that these things are risks that we're not mitigating adequately. Or this person seems really unhappy. What can we do to help them do better? And finally, we are the defense against, oh, that's someone else's problem. If you're a, man if you're a manager, capital M, everything is your problem unless it's explicitly delegated to someone else. So we are the universal exception catchers of the world, um, if there's no other more specialized exception catcher. So there are a couple of tools that are fairly universal to management. Um, they kind of divide into three basic categories. Number one, gathering information. Number two, figuring out how to most effectively communicate that information. And then step three, actually communicating that. So one important thing I'm going to call it that you should read up about afterwards if you haven't already heard of it is situation behavior impact. So basically telling someone in this specific scenario, here's what I saw that it was especially good or especially bad or neutral. 
and here's what the effect of it was on other people. And that's a very excellent way of getting through to people, here's what I would like you to change, and here's an example where you did it, and here's what you could do better that would result in, in a better outcome next time. Or here's what you did especially well, keep doing that. So getting to my promise to talk about common situations, because I do have a rather uh, short time slot, um, like I said, one thing that, manager, that capital M managers do, but you can do as well, is help people with their career development. So in particular, you can mentor people. So mentoring is kind of more of a direct, someone comes to you and says, you know, hey, I don't know what to do here, can you help me figure out what to do here? And you tell them what you, th what, what you think. That's mentoring. With coaching, it's kind of more of a matter of asking the right questions so that people come up to the, come up, come to the right answers on their own and think that it's their idea. <laughs> and then finally, sponsoring is talking, instead of talking directly to someone, you're acting as someone's advocate in a wider audience. So for example, of, my favorite example of this I like to give at EsteriCon is, I co-chaired EsteriCon Santa Clara, and how I got to doing that was Sabrina Farmer basically said, hey, use Nix, you should have Liz co-chair this. And I was like, ah, she never asked me, she just, she just said, hey, Liz is awesome for this. And they talked to me and they decided that they wanted me to coach her. So offering people in your network opportunities is sponsoring, and that's something that capital M managers do, but you can do as well. Also, helping figure, people figure out what their next product is going to be and how it uh, aligns with their career goals, that's something that you can help people with. You can help people find more interesting uh, tasks for them to work on that will help grow their skills and keep their interest in what they're doing. And that kind of goes hand in hand with setting people up for success, whatever success in your organization is defined by. Whether it be learning more skills or getting, from, getting people promoted and getting them pay raises or giving them kind of more areas of responsibility or more interesting work. Those are all different ways that you can set someone up for success. And also, like I said with the sponsorship thing, you can tell people about awesome work that other people on your team are doing. That way they know who they should turn to if they want to get something done. So here's another area in which capital M managers act that you can too. Uh, technical conflict. How many of you have ever seen someone have a technical disagreement with someone else, whether it be on the same team or a, diff or a different team? About half of you, okay. How many, of you ha how many of you have seen it get really bad to the point that people are like arguing with each other every time that they see each other or, or that they just don't trust each other anymore? So congratulations, if you, know and if you know and have the trust of both of those people, you can talk to them individually and figure out kind of what is this person concerned about? What can you formulate to try to resolve this? Kind of how can you get these two people that are arguing with each other back on the same page. That doesn't necessarily mean one person wins or one person loses. It means kind of trying to explain to the other person, here's what the concerns are in a neutral fashion. And if that doesn't work, you need to find someone who can, who can be a credible person to decide and to explain and take responsibility if it, if it works or doesn't work. So, that's kind of a, an important thing that, man, that managers do, that individual contributors can help with too, is help, help mediate disagreements. But there's also uh, interpersonal conflicts, like people who can't stand each other even, even though it's not over a technical thing. Or maybe there's this one toxic person on your team that, that pollutes the entire culture. So you as an individual contributor can set a good example, can model the behavior that you want to see on the team and call out when people are also doing the good behavior and call out when people are doing the bad behavior that you don't want them to, to do. Um, so you as a peer have a very powerful voice to, to stop someone and say, hey, I don't think that's okay because one of the worst possible things you can do if there's bad behavior going on on your team is to just sit there silently and not do anything. That just reinforces the idea to that person that it's okay to do when it's not. And in particular, with regard to escalations, you can also ask for help because it may be that someone above you doesn't know that this is a problem. And you can say, here's the problem I perceive and here's what I would like to see done about it. That latter part is important 
because it's very important to managers, capital lab managers, to, to know kind of what do you want out of this? Are you looking to just be heard emotionally or are you looking me to, for me to find a solution? What do you want me to do? So I'm not going to talk super long about escalations. Uh, Sabrina Farmer does a really great hour-long talk on escalations. This talk could go an hour if I went, went down, down that road. Um, but I highly, highly recommend uh, trying to find her uh, to give a talk about that sometime. Another area that you can help other people on your team or yourself is with imposter syndrome. Does anyone here, how many people here know what imposter syndrome is? Raise your hand. Okay, that's almost everyone, good. Uh, so imposter syndrome is when you think, you know, oh my goodness, I'm overwhelmed, you know, like, no, I, I don't belong here. Like, how could, how could I possibly have been chosen for this? This doesn't make any sense. So one way you can help other people is to say, you know, yes, you belong here. Look at this awesome thing that you did. It doesn't fully solve it, but it definitely makes it a lot easier than kind of being in a silent environment where no one says anything positive about your contributions and then you start wondering, like, do I really belong here? And also, never, ever, ever punish people for mistakes. Blameless postmortems, etc. And also, as was said, I think, in the keynote, one of the keynote presentations this morning, human error should not be a, a possible cause of, of a postmortem. That's insufficient process control or, some, or something else like that. The process fails, never the human. So another place that people that are at working as individual contributors can really help is say something when you're feeling burnt out or when your team is operationally overloaded to the point that you can't get project work done. So when you recognize that happening, like, hey, I really don't want to come to work today, like this, I don't want to deal with all this stupid stuff. Or my team is so overloaded that we haven't done any concrete work on our projects in the past two weeks. So you can, it is far better to say we are going to get 20% less done so we can continue doing it indefinitely or to deliberately drop some of your operational load than it is for that to suddenly fail without any forewarning. So planned failure is, is a useful tool to demonstrate, hey, we are in trouble. Here's the work that we cannot sustainably do anymore. We're going to drop it right now. You need to figure out how to, how to solve this management. So if you're not empowered to fix this on your own, escalate. Because frequently, <clears throat> it, is a, it is a failure mode for people to not notice that this is happening or for it to sneak up on you. But when you do see it, call it out. So slipping schedules happen, um, but you can do things to help. You can produce good time estimates. You can figure out what are the risk factors, what help do I need in order to actually ship my project on schedule, and that's a lot of overlap both between management and, pro and program management. So this is an uh, in interesting term. Uh, it was propagated by Todd Jackson, a former Gmail product manager who's now at Dropbox. Um, and the idea is that managers and, other, and tech leads and other people kind of who have to deal with external pressures fall into two categories, shit umbrellas and shit funnels. The shit umbrella is the person who says, you know what, that mandate or that product change that you want, it's not going to work for this team and here is why. And they make sure that they don't pass on to their team any of the random stuff that comes up. And it's, it's not necessarily that your organization is bad if shit is happening. <laughs> It's kind of any kind of like product requirement change from customers or stakeholders, things that require you to do significant effort that you didn't plan for. So you can either push back and say, hey, we, don't, we shouldn't do this, or to do the research, do the homework, and be able to explain to your team, this is why it's important that we drop everything and do this. I know you didn't plan for it, but here's why it's important, and to persuade people that it's not actually shit. On the other hand, people who are shit funnels, they were just like, this mandate came in from headquarters, you need to do it. I don't care what your priorities were, just do it. And that makes life wor worse for the entire team. So don't be a shit funnel, and if you see your manager doing that, you need to tell their manager, or tell them, you know, hey, this is really sucky, like you're basically pressuring the team in a way that they don't like. So I think finally, or second, second to last in this list of common situations, low performance happens. Um, and this is not really something where individual contributors should take the lead, 
but you should point it out to, to that person's manager. What specific examples? Like if someone really lets you down in a repeated way, you should tell them that. Uh, you should tell their manager that. And it is normal for fixing low performance to take quite some time on the order of months. But if it goes on a year, that's probably a sign that nothing's being done and that you should, and that you should escalate even more than you already have. Because having low performance continue for a long time is not really acceptable. So this is broken out into a separate section um, because this is kind of the horizontal part of doing management. Is I think like Kurt said in his, in his keynote, um, relationships are everything, especially in SRE. And it's something that by default uh, managers and TLs tend to do, but that you as an individual contributor can also, can also do. Um, your management chain is not the only interface to your team. You can be too, you just have to reach out to people and talk to people. Um, make sure that you're talking to other people that you interact with, because that way you can solve problems much more quickly and easily than if you have to go up, to your, up through your management chains. So it's important to build relationships by delivering exactly what you promise, making sure that everyone understands, whether it be in writing or not, uh, what, you, what you're promising to do, and that if you are depending on someone else to do something, that you get a promise written down saying this is what, what you're going to do so that you can have some kind of accountability. So you need to follow up in both directions, both I promised you this, here's where I am, or you promised me this, I'm depending on it, here, like what's, what's the status we're currently blocking on you. And never over-promise and under-deliver, that just leads people to be disappointed. Um, the, one of the final things I want to leave you with here is that you need to be thoughtful and emotionally aware. Um, like I was saying earlier, there are times when people need to vent, there are times when people are looking for solutions. Make sure you know the difference between them. So, kind of in the last couple of minutes, I want to talk about how can you make sure that, you, that your manager is doing the right things. Uh, first of all, are you and your team developing? Are you learning new, new things? Are you developing your, your scope of responsibilities? Are you still interested in what you're doing? Is there anyone who's stuck on your team? And is your team actually accomplishing what, it's, what it wants to do? Is your manager noticing when there are problems on your team and proactively fixing them? Is your manager finding things that are going to become blockers for your team and making sure that they're called out in advance? And do you feel comfortable and safe talking to your manager? The other thing is that you need to make sure that your manager has a clear idea of what your team is going to do and that your team is in fact behind that vision. And that your team, and that you need to make sure that your manager is acting as a shit umbrella protecting you from stuff, not just funneling mandates onto you. And that your manager is not taking all of the credit and instead saying that you are doing a good job and here are the things that you're doing. So if your manager is not doing any of those things, you can tell them about it and they should fix it because manager is human. We make mistakes too. This really does happen. Um, so you can say, in this situation, you didn't provide me a support, it made me feel really bad, can you, can you please do, do better next time? So, if talking to your manager doesn't work, talk to your manager's peer, talk to your manager's managers. Um, don't let management problems fester, that just makes everyone miserable for a period of months to years rather than actually fixing the problem. So, uh, that's the lightning version of the talk. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have questions, I think we have two minutes, or you can come find me in the break. Please use the microphone. Hi. Okay, so you were saying about the role, you were talking a lot about the role of the uh, manager yep. inside the team to facilitate a few, like, uh, break up fights or try to find for specific employees that have problems communicating with each other. And I'm asking about having some sort of a feedback loop where, let's say, the team manages itself and then having some sort of a feedback loop once every a while to talk about all those issues together and then it's no longer the job of the manager 
basically self-managed team, servant leadership. Is that something that you do with Google? There are definitely some teams that get to talk to each other much more frequently. More often, personal disagreements like that tend to manifest across different sites or across different teams, um, in which case kind of meeting every day as a self-organizing team is much less feasible as opposed to having it devolve into us versus them type situations. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, as a manager myself, I found that a lot of the awareness for these issues only really grew once I was in that role. So I was wondering, other than sending people to you, what managers can do to sort of grow these abilities in their own teams? One thing that we do on my team um, is for, is that we encourage people to talk to other individual contributors from other offices. So members of my team in New York talk to members of my team in, in Dublin. We kind of have a rotation where everyone has a buddy on the other half of their team that they talk to regularly, like every, every two weeks or so, in order to make sure that kind of people are listening to each other and kind of sound, acting as sounding boards for each other. So that's kind of one way of building that awareness. Um, some of the technical leadership aspects happen when someone becomes a tech lead um, in terms of needing to assess kind of the pulse of the team and setting the direction of the team. Um, but it definitely is that, that thing I was saying about, on, about online gaming. I, I, I admit that I learned a ton about management from doing that by trial and, trial and error than I would have done any other, any other way. I, I would love to find it solutions to this because it is definitely an area where there's not as much training as there perhaps could be. So I guess one of the answers could be to actually put people into positions where they need to exercise these skills. Yes, with the understanding leads. that they may fail and that yes. is okay. If people do not have to be perfect to be managers. They just have to be willing to learn from mistakes. And people have to tolerate those mistakes and provide feedback if they're working with someone new to management. Uh, last question. I've actually, speaking of failure, I have a question about that. So you mentioned that um, holding people accountable um, for goals is important, which I agree with. And I'm wondering how, what are some suggestions you can offer for how to maintain accountability while also maintaining that culture of blameless learning and retrospection? How do you balance those two things? I think that it's kind of important. So this is kind of like if you have an incident you write a post-mortem, and then you don't fix any of the action items, and the incident happens again. That's very different than having an incident, writing a post-mortem, fixing this stuff, having a different kind of incident happen, right? If something is consistently a problem for someone, and they are not learning, then you can, right, like, you can be blameless, you can be blameless when something happens for the first or second time, when it happens, when there's a consistent pattern, you need to fix it, or, you, or maybe this is not the right job for you. Thank you, that's very helpful. All right, thank you very much, and feel free to talk to me later. So, uh, okay. so we're going to have a break now, 40-minute breaks with uh, fresh friends and coffee.